Welcome back to Let's Play Nicktoons Unite. So, Turner, you finally made it, and I see that you brought your fairies with you. You call my friends fairies? What's a fairy? You're too late. Calamitous and the Syndicate have more than enough power for the Doomsday Device. And very soon, the Syndicate will demonstrate the power it has over all worlds by destroying one! <laughs> With fairy magic under my control, I am unstoppable! The Syndicate will rule the universe, and I will rule Dimsdale and Fairy World! Oh, he's right, Timmy! As long as that machine is draining fairy magic, we can't do anything to him! But we can make fun of his outfit. Nice pants. We've got to shut his machine down. Okay, so I just went through a half hour long freak out. Uh, well, of course. Because my laptop, when I started recording this, for some reason, just decided outright to... Oh, do I still have to do what I did to Timmy? No, it's not a job for cleft. It's a job for Freezy. No, it's not. What do I do? Let's just hurt him for now. But uh, when I first started recording this, I noticed that my that Audacity was recording the game audio instead of what I was saying. God, Sponge, I'm sucking hurt. Same goes to Timmy, which is me. And I was kind of confused, so I tried to set it back to recording my headset, and it didn't recognize my headset for some odd reason. So then. Okay, so that... Oh, it's like the color changed on this generator. It would be good if I actually remembered how to do this, but it would also be good if I devote energy to playing this instead of explaining a little story. But furthering my little anecdote. So, I restart the computer because for some reason it just would not... Well, okay. It simply would not recognize... I have to hit... Yeah, I believe I have to hit him, and then... Because you saw it, he can heal. I restarted my computer, and then, instead of things being fixed, my computer wouldn't recognize any. Stop using all your energy, Jimmy. It wouldn't recognize any USB input, so I freaked out like crazy. Because that would mean no recording this game at all with my Dazzle or anything. I originally assumed it was my headset that had a problem, which I'd be okay with, because I could just get a new one sometime. How do you destroy these? Hmm. Guess I just get a new one sometime. Then find a way to shut them down. How would I go about doing that? These bosses in this game aren't exactly intuitive as you go on, kind of like you saw with Plankton. But, uh... After that, that was when I started being really freaked out. Because, like I said, there would be pretty much no blood space at all. In fact, I got to the point where, because I'm this heck bent on doing my Let's Plays, I got the idea that if I had to, what I could do is I could record games on emulators, which would mean not having to use a USB input, and recording the commentary with my phone, which I would then... Oh, wait. Which I could then transfer to myself by email instead of USB. Hi, oh, yeah, you can actually aim with melee. Okay, so it says send him flying, then take the, out the generators. So how do you take out the generators? Unless I have to use somebody... Oh! Okay, he's stealing our power. That's how we're losing power. That attack of his drains power. That's odd. But that kind of implies that power is important. Can I train you? I can't make these smaller. That does nothing. That also does nothing. SpongeBob, do you have some form of use? Oh wait, no, it says send them flying and then destroy them, so I might have to... Okay. <laughs> but then I restart my computer, I'm not... Well, then my computer locked up while I tried to record stuff with my Dazzle, which, of course, sent me at the height of my freak out, so... How I just, like, take them out like this? Okay, forget the generators. Oh, no! Okay, so you do have to take out the generators with... Well, up until now, he's just been healing before I could actually... get his health all the way down. 
Okay, sure. Whatever. I assume it didn't work, because when I was doing the right thing, it didn't work. That's kind of a thing you really need to try to not do when you're making a video game, I think. Anyways, I restart my computer one more time after it locked up, and now it works, so whatever. Kind of freaky, but... Anyway, so something that I really think uh, needs attention needs to be given to when designing things like puzzles, well, yeah, when designing puzzles for video games, is you need to give some sort of positive reinforcement when the player is doing the right thing. If they're doing something that they're supposed to do to solve the puzzle, then they should actually have some sort of indication they're doing so, because otherwise, if it's too diff- if it's as a result too difficult- well, if it is too difficult to actually pull off what you're supposed to do, even when you're trying to do what you're supposed to do, darn it, then you have the issue of them trying to do the right thing, but not doing it successfully unless it's something that doesn't work, like I've had experiences with before, like with Eco, and a little piston you had to jump on top of. I tried jumping on the piston while I was moving upwards, and nothing happened, because it was basically just too difficult to do. And because that, I assumed that didn't work, so I spent forever trying to do other things. And it turned out that I was doing the right thing at the, from the very beginning. Or if it just doesn't work very well, of course, then... If the game just doesn't work very well or something like that, then what? More Crocker? You'll just assume that whatever you're doing oops, all right, was the wrong thing. Because it, on this game, didn't give you positive results. Well, of course, you don't want to be handing your thing to the players on Silver Platter in most cases either. Yeah, at least you want to establish yourself as a legitimate puzzle game of some sort. Why is it with Timmy and freezing these things? I wonder if you could theoretically you could theoretically destroy all of those in one go, couldn't you? I'm sure you could. Speedrun would pull it off, I'm sure. Anyways, so that was just kind of a minor, minor example of that in this game, I guess. Although it, I'm not really having problems with it anymore. But when I would attack Crocker, he would just end up going to heal himself. So I'd assume that what I was supposed to do is... Where am I? Uh, oh, you turned me into this. Okay, so, see, I'm kind of confused because right here... Okay, yeah. Cosmo was floating in the air. I assumed that that was me. Because the weapon I was holding was just sitting there while I was an enemy. Anyways. What was I even saying? I was attacking him, and I'd assume that I I wouldn't be bringing his health down to zero until I was winning. That when I first brought his health down to zero, I would win. That's kind of a natural thing to assume. Like, see, this would happen. Normally... In every boss fight up until now, whenever we would bring a boss's health to zero, we would win the fight, which would mean I'd have to... mean, indirectly, that I'd have to take out the energy generators before. <laughs> Sounds so dumb. I'd have to take out the energy, energy generators before taking down his health. Even though it says send him flying, I took that to mean just kind of hitting him a little bit. Because I figured that to bring his health down to zero, you would have to have already destroyed the generators. You'd have to have figured everything out. Yay, finally the top. Okay, why is there still an invincibility power up in the middle of a boss fight? Anyways, I guess that's enough about that. But once I... That combined with the fact that what I did that was right didn't seem to work... Okay, camera? Seriously. It lets me assuming that I was doing something wrong when I was affecting something that was not wrong. Most decidedly. This is probably going to take a while, isn't it? That's not going to be fun.
You know, I kind of like the idea of attacks that drain your power in this game. I wish more bosses had that, but I think only Crocker has them. Come on. Haha! -ha! You're still not invincible. It just takes forever to actually attack. But instead, you just have to deal a lot of damage to him in a short period of time. Could you stop saying that to me? Seriously. So I'm gonna get one of these at a time, aren't I, in this fight? It's gonna suck. And by the way, because of that whole fiasco that happened that I chronicled at the beginning of this episode, this episode and the next two are probably going to be a little bit shorter than usual because I don't have as much time as I normally would tonight to record things because of all that stuff that went on. And I do apologize for that, but I need to do what I need to do to make things work in life. Hello, Crocker. I think I've already <laughs> explained through that whole phone thing to record my commentary and record on emulators that I am... No, Timmy, don't switch down back to that that I am very determined to actually keep producing content at any given time, and as quality content as I can as well. But if it's not possible, well... I wish for assistance. But if it happens to not be possible while keeping other things in life at acceptable levels, that's kind of the way things are. But I don't think you guys are going to have to worry about that anytime soon, so... Oh no! I have power now, though. Ha! Ah! <laughs> I almost like being turned into this thing just so I can hit Crocker as a little enemy. To mock him. That, that reach is crazy. I have to say that I love Crocker's voice work in this game. It's really funny. Particularly when it gets sent flying. It's so useful having a melee attack as Timmy. It has pretty good range, too. I don't think it does more damage than other attacks, melee attacks, that other characters do. But it's not really a bad thing. I wouldn't expect it to, considering it doesn't use up energy or anything. Nope, nope, nope. I don't know why he was completely invincible using that attack, but... I can go with it. It'd be kind of funny if everybody that turned into... Uh, little mooks actually turned into... Uh, some kind of version of said mook that was actually tailored to look like themselves in some way. Like Danny having a Dion's chest. You can't stop me! The fairies have their magic back! Yay, magic! Let's wish for a happy ending. Has it back too. It's over! You may have beat me this time, Turner, but Fairy World will be mine again! The Doomsday Machine is fully charged! You don't have a chance! Hmm. You'd think we'd learn by now that they run away when we beat them. I'll just assume that was part of the plan. If what Crocker said is true, we need to head back to Retroville right away. We must find Professor Calamitous before he uses that doomsday machine. Don't sweat it. I think I can fix everything now. Yes. I wish that none of these problems oh. ever happened. This was a trust? bad guys were in jail. I thought that I'm never happened. Sorry, Timmy, but the rules say that you can only wish for changes to our world. By the power of plot. Crocker is out of our reach for the moment. I guess we gotta do this the old-fashioned way. Okay, Jimmy, back to Retroville. Okay, I guess. I, for some reason, I wondered that throughout so much of this game. I guess it. I just never noticed it being addressed. This also explains it not being addressed in other games. Okay. Well, that's not a plot hole anymore. Although, you could wonder why they don't use more wishing things to their advantages. But anyways. I have 15 points. I don't think that's going to do me much good. Let's go. Cindy? 
What are you doing in my lab? Why are you I'm using the movie design? You have once again managed to ruin the lives of everyone in Retroville. What makes you think I'm involved? It doesn't take a genius IQ. If something this bad happens, Neutrons is the first place to look. I want to know what you're going to do about this. Hi, Cindy. Oh, hi, Timmy. I didn't know you were back in Retroville. We haven't got time for this. We need to find Professor Calamitous before he starts his doomsday machine. <laughs> You're too late, Jimmy Neutron. All of your heroics have been for nothing. And now, the final stroke of my master plan. All the worlds in the, um, uh... Universe? Yes, universe will bow down to the Syndicate's power or be, um, uh... Destroyed? Uh... Yes! Destroyed! Now that the Doomsday Machine is ready, your worlds have no choice but to accept our demands. You can't stop us! All the worlds in the universe? What? We can stop them if we disable their Doomsday Machine. We've got to find Professor Calamitous' lab. Jimmy, I think Goddard might need a bath. He looks like he has fleas. Ew! Fleas! Get him away from me! Goddard doesn't get fleas. Wait a minute. That's it! That must be how Calamitous copied my plans for the Universe Portal Machine. He's spying on us through some kind of flea bot. Goddard, what? run a self-diagnostic search for energy losses within your system. The Such an assumption. Likely to be a parasitic nanobot. What are you doing, Neutron? There is a madman about to destroy the world, and you are worried about a little flea inside your pet? We need to find Professor Calamitous' secret lab. If he has been watching us through a device inside Goddard, then it must be transmitting a signal to his base. If we can reach the device, we can track the signal back to Calamitous. We need a plan. Think, think, think. They tried. Great blast! We've got it! We can shrink ourselves down with the shrink ray and fly into Goddard's mouth using my hovercraft. Once we capture the flea bot, we can trace its signal back to Calamitous's lair. Okay, so I'm really weirded out by a, really a number of things there, but I don't get why they used Cindy's design from the movie. I'm pretty sure she was redesigned immediately when the when Jimmy Neutron was made as a TV series. Either that or it was only for the first season, but I'm pretty sure the Fairly Odd Parents Jimmy Neutron crossover did not happen in the first season. So I'm not sure. Anyways, going one of Professor Klamis kind of know like right now that we were planning to go on inside of Goddard through said flea bot by listening to said flea bot and he could just kind of shut it off or something or tell it to go away so we couldn't do exactly what we're trying to do right now and I have no reason to do what I'm doing right now anyways I suppose that will be it for this episode of let's play no not yet of let's whoa it all respawned oh that's beautiful but I can't pick it up Um, of this of Let's Play Nicktoons Unite. Next episode, we will <laughs> go inside of Goddard, I guess. And it's actually what has always been my least favorite level of the game. I'm not sure if you want to dislike it as much this time around as I did last time. But, we'll see. I would actually cut off the episode here with a rather... Dramatic cliffhanger about what's actually on the side of this wall, if you couldn't already see it right now, and if it hadn't just been shown off in the last cutscene. So. Open! So I guess we'll just reap our reward of opening this door up and be on our merry way. There is a hovercraft with kind of lazy collisions. I think they could have done more with the lab in this game, but oh well, they had tried, at least. That's kind of my attitude towards this game in general. Oh well, they tried. Well, they they tried in some areas, but it's worth the trouble. Anyways, in the next episode, we will have some fun, maybe. Or maybe we'll hate everything. 
with the amazing journey to the center of Goddard. Which, for some reason... Oh, oh, oh okay, Dan, you get stuck like that. That's okay. Uh, I can't move. Game! Which, for some reason, involves walking to the portal, but... See you then, guys!